Okay, welcome back everybody. So what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to install Java. Now, Java by default is binary licensed, meaning Oracle owns, uh, although they, they've said that they will not enforce patents on the code that they've written now that they own it f having purchased Sun Microsystems. There's a little bit of, of worry in the community and there has been for some time about the true open source nature of Java. So Java by default is installed for most Linux distributions using the Open JDK, which uses the Iced T compiler. Now, in our case, on this virtual machine, you'll see that we do not have Java installed. So we're going to go ahead and, and actually install Java. And if you want to use the Open JDK, you certainly can do so. And in fact, the Open JDK works well with uh, as as a plugin for things like Open Office, um, Tomcat. Uh, etc. However, if you if you need to use some of Java's more esoteric or advanced features, they haven't been completely reverse engineered um, by the community yet. So not all of the features are available for OpenJDK if you have an application that relies on Java. So once this is installed, you'll see that this, like a lot of other binary applications in Ubuntu, currently uses the Etsy alternatives directory so that it, it points its configuration for a particular application to handle certain kinds of files. It sets up links between where it's installed and the binary files themselves. Okay, so OpenJDK is now installed in our system. If we do a Java minus version, you'll see that we're running the OpenJDK runtime environment 17055. Now, once we install Java, you'll notice that, like a lot of other applications, it uses the Etsy alternatives directory to set up its aliases in our configuration. So if we do an LSAL and look at what we have in Java, we have a link between Java and where it's installed, which in this case is user lib JVM Java 7 open JDK. Now there are two ways that you can install Oracle's Java in Ubuntu or in CentOS. The process is exactly the same. The last step is different in terms of the actual command you use and uh, I will show you what that difference is. The first thing we need to do is we need to go and grab Java from Oracle. So I'm just going to grab the Java Standard Edition and I'm going to grab version 7 and in this case it's U60. So let's go ahead and grab the JDK. We have to accept this agreement. Now there's no Debian package available for us we're not going to convert an RPM. It works just fine using the tar package. So that's what we're going to do. We'll go ahead and grab that and download it. Shouldn't take long right here. It's only going to take a couple of seconds. Then we're going to blow up and make this package available to us and verify that it runs. So the next thing we're going to do is let's clear our screen. We'll go over to our downloads directory. We'll see we have JDK 7U60 available for us. So let's do a tar zxvf jdk. Let this blow up. And it's just, this isn't an install, this is actually just a directory. We're going more and more to just directories all completely self-contained within an application, which certainly makes it easier for the end user. Let's go to our binary directory. Let's clear our screen. And if you remember, right now we have a reference in user bin for Java. And if we look at user bin Java, we'll see that it is a reference to Etsy Alternatives Java. And if we look at Etsy Alternatives Java, 
we'll see that that is a reference to user lib JVM Java 7 OpenJDK. So rather than an uninstall the OpenJDK, which you may use for any number of reasons, you can have these um, work just fine side by side, but we're going to say that we want to use Oracle Java as the default. So since Java actually exists right here in this directory, if we run Java minus version, we'll see that Java version 17060, Java hotspot 64-bit server SE runtime environment. So the version we have installed for OpenJDK is, is 17055. The one we're going to run for Oracle is 17060. So let's make this our default. So the first thing we need to do is I'm going to move this directory one to opt. Now if I look in opt, in fact, let's make this a little bit easier for us. Let's move JDK to just Java. So now we have a directory Ava, or opt Java. Now we can simply go in and delete the default link from Etsy alternatives to Java, but there's a better way to do that. So this way, what it does is it installs what's called an alternative. An alternative for our system for Java applications is in this program. So in Etsy alternatives, as we know, if we look at Java, we have a couple of references. We have one for Java itself, and we have one for the uh, man page. We're not going to worry about the man page. What we are going to do is we're going to change by using the alternatives application, and we're going to install an alternative and we're going to say user bin java which is the link for the application called java we want to point to opt java bin java and then 200,000 and all that really does is tell the system where this where this goes the, the, the 200,000 is simply the, the, the link number that sets up the Etsy alternatives so that the alternatives application knows exactly where everything is. So that's how you would update the alternatives for every distribution except for Ubuntu. For Ubuntu, you'll execute update alternatives dash dash install. And now you'll see that auto mode for user bin Java and now we can look at user bin Java. It still points to Etsy alternatives. But now, if we look at Etsy alternatives and Java, now it points to opt Java bin Java. Which means that now, if I've done this right, Java version should now say Java version 17060, etc. Now with OpenJDK we have just that one alternative for uh, for Java. However, you can use the same method to um, put the Java Web Start, the Java Compiler, the JRE, etc. You just need to make sure that if you don't have a link already in user bin in your path, that you'll have to create the user bin link to Etsy alternatives and whatever application you're going to run. So if we were going to, for example, add uh, update alternatives install for the Java compiler all we would do was go through here and add the Java compiler so now Etsy alternatives will show that there are two alternatives Java and Java C pointing to op Java bin however if we do a witch on Java C well, it's it that one's already installed let's look at which Java WS okay that one's not installed so let's do that one if we and WS being the web start, the uh, the more secure and flexible applet uh, binary library. So now we have uh, opt Java bin Java WS, and if we look at user bin, we'll see that now we have Java WS. So we can do everything that we need to from within the Etsy alternatives just be sure that you double check that the uh, the link between where you're creating the Etsy alternatives from also is replicated back to user bin uh, or somewhere else in your path which you have full control over 
that's all there is. You can change all of the alternatives for all of the Java links that are in Etsy alternatives, even on a system that's uh, running multiple versions. You can do it um, in any file path that you want, depending on where you've put the version of Java you want to run universally. That's all there is to it. My name is Terry for Linux Academy, brought to you by Pinehead TV.